All right, let's jump into it. First, we'll be getting started with Michael Kamez for Bebop and Van Bedient and Carl Soule from Adobe. While I'm back in the studio, all our guests are working from home, but together, how cloud-like. Adobe and Bebop teams, the floor is yours. Thanks everyone. Thank you everyone at Key Code Media. Yes, uh, I am Michael Kamis. I'm director of BizDev over at Bebop Technology. And uh, today we're gonna show a little bit about what Bebop can do, especially when it pertains to using Adobe Productions. If you haven't worked with Productions yet, you're gonna love it. And we're gonna show you how that works on Bebop. Now, as a quick refresher as to what Bebop is, Bebop is virtualizing post-production in the cloud. So we're actively putting your media, your applications, your NLE, all the tools that you use to create it, uh, to create and edit a story, we're putting that all in the cloud. The cloud, as you know, is someone else's data center. And we're using uh, three of the big providers out there, the Microsoft Azure, the uh, uh, AWS, uh, Amazon, and of course, GCP Google. And the great thing about these three providers is that they allow us to use very powerful machines in the cloud with a ton of RAM, with a ton of GPU horsepower, and uh, almost an unlimited amount of storage. And the storage that we use in the cloud is in these same data centers. So you can remote in to the Bebop workstation in the cloud and read and write media at hundreds of megabytes a second. So that essentially gives you a virtual LAN in the cloud and you can scale up and down as you need. Okay, now that I'm through that pitch, let's actually show you what Bebop kind of looks like. First, we have the Bebop client. And the Bebop client is what well, works on Mac and PC, and it allows you to jump into different organizations. Say you're an administrator that uh, has groups of freelancers working on groups of different projects. You obviously want to keep people and prying eyes from seeing one project or another, or even what that project is named. So by having organizations, we can section off uh, groups of users uh, from other users uh, in a permission-based way. We also have the ability, uh, if you've signed up for it, to use multiple clusters of computers and storage in different regions around the country. So if your users are on the East Coast, that's great. We can spin everything up in a data center on the East Coast. So the data center is closest to those users. And the closer you are to the data center, the better your experience is going to be because after all, you're remoting into a workstation in that data center. We normally wanna be within about a thousand, maybe 1500 miles of that data center uh, and that will give you decreased latency. So it's easier to use the machine uh, without it feeling like there's some lag. So what I've done is I've jumped into this Adobe production panel uh, pod as we call them and you'll see there's a couple familiar names in here. We've got Carl Soule and Van Bediet from Adobe. They'll be showing you productions on Bebop in just a few minutes. And then you'll see my machine. I have access to all of these machines. And therein lies the beauty of the cloud is that you are no longer relegated to one person, one computer. Uh, I can start a render or an export on any of these machines and then simply launch another workstation. And since everyone is talking to the same shared storage, you can pick up right where you left off while the other m machine continues what it's doing. So it really eliminates those, uh, shall we say, lengthy coffee breaks uh, while you wait for renders to continue. We also have really familiar tools like upload and download. So if you wanna upload to the shared storage in the cloud, you can browse your local files or folders and then upload those files. And we upload files concurrently to really saturate uh, that connection to get files up as fast as humanly possible. Uh, of course, if I wanna download things, well, I have that permission too. And the great thing is, is that this is done on a permission basis. So as an administrator, you can allow people to upload or you can disallow people from uploading. So it really gives you a one point to determine if content can move to the cloud and down from the cloud. Of course, if you wanna use things like Aspera or Signiant, those work too, because we can install those clients on the virtual machine that you're logging into in the cloud. Okay, that's enough uh, context. I'm now gonna go back to my workstations. You can see that I have a workstation running. I'm gonna bounce back into that workstation. This is a workstation that's sitting 
uh, about 400 miles north of me. Uh, this system is in San Jose, California. I'm in Southern California. And my latency is about 23 or 24 uh, four milliseconds, which is very fast, which means when I click on things, uh, the response is there very quickly. Uh, the the benefit of that, obviously, is that you're forgetting that you're working remote, and it just feels like someone else's computer for the first couple minutes, and then it uh, then you just use it. So when you log into the Bebop workstation, we present a dashboard, and dashboard ha has a lot of cool things uh, that that will help you work that much easier. First, we have all of the storage that we can mount. If you've used uh, Avid Nexus or you've used uh, Facilis TerraBlock Manager or SNS Evo, all of them have applications which allow you to mount those volumes to that workstation. And we've built that into our dashboard. So you can see that I have two or three different storage volumes that I can mount or unmount, and they keep the same drive letter. So that means nothing goes offline. What Bebop has also done is work with Adobe at the code level to automatically set cache volumes on faster storage. So you'll get that much more performance because you're not using the pool of storage that you have for your media, you're only using it for cache. What we also have up here is something called Bebop Links, which is a brand new feature on Bebop. And Bebop Links allows me to share any content sitting on Bebop's secure storage in the cloud and send that link to someone, and then they can download that content. So uh, we can set security parameters, such as when it expires. Uh, we can set passwords. Uh, so this makes it incredibly easy to share the content you've created on Bebop with anyone else. In addition, we also have Receive. Uh, what if you're working with a, uh, an audio house? Maybe they did done a voiceover for you. Great, you can send them a link. They can then upload securely that VO session into the Bebop storage. So again, it makes collaboration uh, on Bebop or even off Bebop uh, easier. But what if you want deeper interop? Well, there's a way for that as well. We have something called OTS, which is called over the shoulder. This allows any user on Bebop to send an email to anyone else on Bebop and they'll get an invite to say, hey, look at my screen and then they log in and they are looking at your screen as if they're looking right over your shoulder. They can see your computer screen, they can hear you talk, we've put audio functionality back and forth. What this does is gives you the ability to interact in real time with someone else watching your edit and you can pick up their subtle verbal cues, whether they like something, whether they don't like something, move things back three frames, it's in real time. So it gives you that synchronous collaboration uh, that everyone wants in the uh, time where we're all distributed in multiple places. What we also have is a little tool that makes it easier for all you Mac folks out there. We understand that a majority of users are using Mac OS and Mac OS doesn't really work in the cloud so well. So we've built in a function called enable command key. Enable command key transforms your Mac keyboard into Windows commands. So that means all the time that you've spent building your Mac hotkeys on a Mac keyboard now will translate uh, for the most part into using your editorial tools on Bebop. So it makes uh, kind of moving to the cloud that much easier. So with all that being said, why don't we load up an Adobe production? I've got a production down here, uh, which I opened a few minutes ago. It loaded all my plugins because we can reach out uh, and get those licenses for your plugins provided you've purchased them. What it also does is we can load extensions. So if you are running Pluralize, if you are utilizing Frame.io or any of the other extensions that have panels for Adobe, we can load those. So if you're using those in an on-prem way, you can also use them in the cloud. And we don't just limit it to that. If you wanna bring in Mogerts through Essential Graphics, you can do that. If you wanna use dynamic linking, such as using uh, an After Effects comp, you can link to that. Bebop doesn't prevent you from doing anything you normally would with the application when you're on Bebop. We make it as seamless as possible. Now, if you look on the left-hand side here in my production panel, you'll see those same familiar names. We've got Carl Soule, we've got Van Bedient from Adobe. And so at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to them so they can show you some of the new features uh, in Adobe Productions. Thank you, Michael. We're really excited to be here today. And thank you also to the Key Code team for having us on. Uh, Adobe is excited to show you Productions working on Bebop. So Productions is our new collaborative 
project sharing feature built inside Premiere Pro. And here we're showing it in a distributed workflow, allowing Carl, Michael, and I to all work from home in different locations, but using a centralized hosted point in the Bebop cloud. Carl's gonna walk us through a demo of productions to show us how to stay organized, efficient, and collaborative within a long form project in Premiere Pro. Carl, go ahead and take it away. All right, thank you, Van. Um, so what I have open right now, we have this production open, and what a production is, is it's a special collection of Premiere Pro projects. And uh, the cool thing about a production is these projects are actually uh, deeply linked under the hood so that you can use multiple projects and you can keep your footage organized, keep your sequences organized, and it's very, very flexible. You can break up uh, your workflow just depending on what you're doing. Right now, what I have done is set this up to cut a trailer uh, based on different scenes within the movie. But this is something that could be set up for um, a, a series. You could actually have a single production that has multiple folders and multiple premiere projects for each episode. And those episodes can even be broken up and you can get as granular as you want. Um, in a lot of cases uh, for feature films, we see people making projects for each scene, projects for each reel. And by doing this, you can kind of organically build out whatever your deliverable happens to be. Um, the cool thing about this, we're still using Premiere Pro projects, but this panel, this new panel in Premiere, the production panel, gives me a one-stop shop uh, to see exactly what everybody is working on. So every editor who's working together opens the same production and instantly you can see at a glance who is working on what. Uh, these are folder icons and they represent just like standard, uh, standard folders. You can put projects inside of those folders um, to organize things however you need. These icons represent Premiere Pro projects and at a glance, I can see this project, for example, has a hollow icon. Nobody has that open right now. Um, this one is filled in. That indicates that I have it open. And any icon that has a green pencil means that is what I am currently working inside. That's what I'm modifying and making changes to. So in this case, I have a project here called Hotel that I'm working on. I also have a project called Carl Trailer Cut. And you can see that open over here, and you can see I've got an editing sequence that I'm going through and cutting this trailer together. Now, part of the trick inside of productions is you can organize your media in separate projects from the projects that contain your timelines. And this means your master clips can stay organized in separate projects, and multiple editors can be pulling from those sources, and we never see any cases of duplicate master clips showing up in projects, we actually stay organized and linked back to those master clips. As a quick example of this, I've got this sequence open right now. You can see that there's a number of different clips inside of the sequence. There's no master clips inside of my project. In fact, if I decide I wanna reveal this in a project, it is actually going to go and open up a separate project and highlight the clip for me in that separate project. Um, everything stays linked together. If I decide I want to cut in some additional footage into this, let's say we want this uh, explosion shot, I can load this in the source monitor. I can actually uh, just drag it and drop it if I need to onto my sequence. You'll notice again, there's no copy of that clip that shows up inside of my editing project. This means there's one set of master clips. All the editors are referencing those same master clips. And this is an important differentiation from just a, a, a standard folder with a collection of Premiere Pro projects. In a production, the projects are actually linked together, um, preventing duplicates, making it easy to stay organized. Um, the other thing you'll notice is Van is currently working inside of this project. I can see his name here and I can see a red lock icon. I still have this project organized. And in fact, you know, Van, this, this scene's kind of complicated. Do you think you can do just a quick spring out for me, a, a separate sequence? Um, just, I wanna kind of see things contextually, if, if you don't mind. Um, okay. We can actually go ahead and uh, work together. I can still use this as a source. Um, I can load clips into my source monitor. I can mark in and out points. I can insert, overwrite, edit. 
into the sequence that I'm working on. But Van currently owns the lock in this, and he can actually go in and make changes. In fact, I can already see he's gone ahead and made some changes for me. Um, and I can see that there's actually a little icon up at the top of the project panel uh, that indicates that there's a change that's happened. I can also see that uh, in the production panel, I can see that the name of this is italicized. So this is telling me that I'm no longer looking at the current state. Now, I don't have to close the project and reopen it to see those changes. I can simply use the flyout menu and choose refresh project to now see those changes update. And now I can go in and see, oh, here's the uh, string out. Um, I can choose to open this in my source monitor. And then I can use that uh, timeline in the source monitor to cut into my own timeline. In fact, I'll use a, a common technique used in Premiere Pro. I can load up uh, Van sequence as a, uh, a separate timeline and pancake these two together so that now I can see this sequence in the source monitor, this sequence in the program monitor, and I can start to cut that in further. So there's no limit to the number of projects that you can have within a production. Uh, there's no limit to the number of folders and subfolders you can break things up into. Uh, for a TV show, again, you might create a uh, folder for episodes. Inside that, have each episode, and everything stays organized. You have one production um, that contains all of these projects. And these projects are actually separate files on disk. What the production looks like, if I were to go up to the top here, click on the flyout menu, I can reveal the production in Explorer and actually see what this looks like. Um, on Windows, it will come up in a Windows Explorer window. You can see here's the, uh, the production folder itself. It's got a series of folders and subfolders. Let's just say I open up the scenes folder here. You can see a number of Premiere Pro projects. These align perfectly with all the projects in the scene folder inside of my production panel within Premiere. If I rename something in one location, it renames in the other. So for anybody who's dealing with a lot of media, for anybody needing to collaborate, productions are a great workflow uh, for working inside of Premiere, allowing multiple editors access to the same source material, being able to own their own projects where they're making their cuts, making their changes, but still have the ability to just keep one set of assets uh, centrally located. And with Bebop, it's a fantastic solution with uh, Michael, Van, myself, all working remotely and able to dial in, so to speak, <laughs> and, uh, and get in and start working together with shared storage um, and shared workstations.